In this video, I'm going to go over the units of concentration that are most commonly used in chemistry. Before I get started, I just want to make sure that everyone understands concentration is a measure of the amount of solute in a solution per either the total amount of solution itself or the amount of solute per solvent. The most common unit of of concentration that is used in chemistry is of course molarity. To calculate the molarity of a solution we will take the amount of solute in units of moles, so the moles of solute, and we will divide that by the volume of the solution in liters. This is solute per solution, solution being of course the combined volume of the solute and the solvent. Another unit of concentration that we use quite a bit in chemistry is mole fraction. We use this a lot when we are talking about solutions that are made of gases. The mole fraction is calculated by taking the number of moles of any one component of the solution. I'm just going to say A. It doesn't necessarily need to be the, the solute. It could be the solvent. And we divide this number by the total number of moles in the whole entire solution. So we can calculate the mole fraction of any one of the components of the solution. It doesn't have to be for the, for the solute. We also occasionally use a unit percent mass. The percent mass unit is calculated by taking the mass of the solute. This is typically in grams. And we divide that by the total mass of the whole entire solution. This um, term in the denominator can sometimes be confusing to students. So I'm going to write this as the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. Just to make sure that everybody understands that down here we are taking the total mass of the solution, not just the mass of the solvent itself. And then of course, since, since this is a percent, we have to multiply it by 100. Like I said, the mass unit that's used here is typically units of grams, but honestly, it doesn't matter which mass unit you use as long as you use the same mass unit the whole way through this equation. And then last but not least, we have a unit called molality which sounds a lot like molarity. The molality of the solution is calculated by taking the number of moles of the solute and dividing it by the mass of the solvent in units of kilograms. This is just the solvent now. It's not the total mass of the solution, and it definitely needs to be in units of kilograms. The last thing that I'm going to do here is to show you how some of these concentrations could be expressed numerically with units on them and also how we pronounce them. So if we're expressing molarity, we typically write the number, like let's say it's 2.5, and we write capital M, which is our symbol for molarity, and we pronounce this 2.5 molar, not 2.5 molarity. Sometimes we'll write the formula of the solute afterwards, so maybe 2.5 molar NaCl. For mole fraction, the symbol for mole fraction is a capital X, and then we put a subscript, um, the formula of the molecule that we're calculating the mole fraction for. So since I said this is for moles of A, I'll be consistent and put A down there. Mole fraction is just a number. It's a unitless number. Maybe it's 0.5. It could be anything. Because this is moles divided by moles, there's no, there's no unit here. And when we express this, we just say something like the mole fraction is 0.5. Percent mass, we would express this the same way we would per express any sort of percentage. So maybe our solution is 2.5%. Sometimes we'll write the solute afterwards, 2.5% NaCl. And then for molality, we write a little m. So 2.5 with a little m, we would pronounce this 2.5 molal, which sounds funny. And just like with molarity or any of the others, sometimes we write the formula of the solute afterwards. Now, since for a lot of people, a lowercase m looks a lot like a capital M, and it's pretty easy to get these two confused, sometimes you might see molarity expressed as 2.5 
moles per kilogram. That's just referencing the units that are used to calculate molarity. This is a little bit less ambiguous than the little m, which again sometimes gets confused with the big M.